Hey guys, Shinchi42 here. So in this video, we're going to do an overview about the alliance in this game. So we're going to talk about how to join or create an alliance. You'll need to build your alliance center to be able to join or create. So once you've built that alliance center, you can cre click create if you want to create an alliance. So the alliance tag is what's going to define your alliance. This is what other alliances will refer you to. And then you can actually enter the alliance name that you want. So the announcement part is basically the alliance descriptions. So put a brief description of what your alliance stands for here. So you can add like the minimum requirements, uh, your allies, your enemies, or your NAP agreements that you guys made in this section. The requirements here will allow you to have full control on who can join or who cannot join your alliances. Basically, you can open your borders here as well, and which anybody can join. Also toggled on the languages, there's a lot of options here actually, which is pretty neat. Now click browse to change your alliance symbol. So in here, you guys can be able to choose what type of background symbols you want, different type of uh, alliance territory colors, different symbols, and different colors for your symbols. So the background territory would actually determine the color of your borders. So once you've built your fortress, you will start seeing this call background territory color. So now, if you want to join a, a different alliance, let's say you don't want to create your own, just make sure to click that join, and then you guys can toggle through. There's a lot of different alliances in your kingdom. You guys can pick which ones you guys want, pick the strongest alliance you guys want to join, um, find actually the most active alliance, like talk to their leader, ask them if they're active or not. So once you've joined an alliance, this is what it's going to look like. You can see that all these are my territories right here, and we've already established, and this is my uh, alliance fortress. As you can see, I have a stone deposit beside me too, so strategically Placing your alliance fortress is really crucial to your success. Now, if you guys are expanding your flags, I really suggest to not just only focus on the alliance resource deposits, but also focus on where there's a lot of resources for your alliance teammates to farm. And I'm going to discuss that in a little bit here, and I'm going to tell you guys that it is crucial for you guys to place your flags or your territories to where there's a lot of resources, because that will help you expand. So now we're going to talk about how to build your flags. You're going to have to build your center fortress first, and once that is established, now you can start building flags. You have to go to your territory, and then click Alliance Flags and start building. So for you to build your flags, you need to connect this into your Alliance territory borders. So once it turns into green, you can start building your flags in here, but you also need to meet your requirements. So I have already, I have a lot of flags already, so it's going to cost me a lot more the more flags you have. So this is the Alliance page, and you guys can see the description shown above, and you guys can see all the information details on your Alliance as well on the left side of the corner. And you can see the leader here is me, Shinchi42, how many territories I have, and you guys can also see how many members I have and the gift level of my Alliance is. Now we're going to navigate through the war. Now in this page, you can see that everyone's pretty much happy and satisfied because there's no war. This is because we haven't started any rally. So if you guys start a rally or your enemy starts a rally to your, one of your alliance cities, you will see it in this page. You need to navigate to all your uh, holy sites. It will be on this page. You can click that coordinates and it will directly transfer you to that area. And you can also see the buffs in this page as well for the only holy sites that you guys have captured. If you want to navigate to the territory, click the flag and you'll be transferred to this page in the Alliance Territory page. So in here you can click all the territory resources earning that you guys have earned by capturing all these uh, Alliance resource deposits. Basically this page is crucial for expanding your territory. You would have to go to this page to start building your flags. You guys can also see the Alliance earnings per hour and how many Alliance resources you guys have captured. So now we're going to start to navigate to the next one which is the help. And if you guys click help, this is basically where you guys would be sending help to your Alliance teammates. And when you guys start to build something and research something and then request for help, it would pop up in this page. What this help does is that it allows you to decrease your building time, research time. This is why this is crucial to join an Alliance. You can also increase more help by increasing your Alliance center. All right, now let's navigate to the storage. Here you guys are going to be able to see how much resources your alliance has and what is the max cap of your storage resources are. And when you click that eye icon, basically this thing tells you how you can contribute to your alliance, basically how you guys can gather all these resources from. And in here you guys can also see who's building your flag and how much the flag costs. As you guys can also see, if the flag starts to increase their cost as the more flags as you build. So another way for the Alliance to gain some resources is just by farming inside the Alliance territories. I do have to say that I'm not quite so sure how much percentage goes to your Alliance. You don't really have to rely on your Alliance deposits. 
This is why I mentioned earlier that strategically placing your flags is crucial for this game. By placing your flags in a lot of resource-rich area would definitely boost your alliance resources. So the next thing that we're going to navigate is the technology. So this is where you can contribute to your alliance by donating your uh, farm or wood. I believe that the system runs a report every 24 hours and it would actually reward the highest contributors for that day. So by donating, you're going to start earning alliance credits here. And let me mention that you guys can also earn alliance credits by participating in building your flags, your fortress, and also by sending help. I do suggest if you're starting a new alliance is to focus on your research on the Together We Rise and the Greater Alliance 1. I do suggest that you guys navigate through this and read all the descriptions of the technologies. So if you're a leader or a rank 4 member, you're going to be able to click that mark as recommended. What this does is that it guides your alliance members to know what type of research you guys want to focus on. I want to give you guys some tips here. If you guys are trying to increase your member cap size, you guys should start researching the uh, flag quantity one. What building flags does is that it allows your member cap size to increase by one. So the next one that we're going to start to navigate is the gift. So in here, you guys are going to be able to see all the rewards that your alliance would get. Make sure to read the text information that is shown in here. So some of the items that you guys would be able to receive here are like uh, resources, action point recovery, uh, alliance credits, and also some VIP points, uh, arrows of resistance that are needed for upgrading your watchtowers. So there's a lot of things that you guys can actually receive from the alliance gift. I can go on and on on all of this. And uh, you, as you guys have seen, this, uh, while I'm scrolling up and down, you guys could receive also some boost in here. So let's navigate to the next one, which is the shop that is currently not available on this update. I'm hoping in the future update that it would soon be available for us to use. So now on the second tab, you guys can see all the alliance members. So if you click that eye icon again on top, you're going to see all the privileges of each rank. There's really no difference between rank 1 and rank 2, but there's a, quite a big of a difference between rank 3 and rank 4. So being a rank 4, you can actually kick members and promote members and also build some alliance buildings. Navigate to the third tab and click settings and you will be prompted to the settings page of your alliance. So in here, you're going to be able to edit your alliance. Basically, if you want to change your name, uh, your alliance tag, it's going to cost you some gem. If you want to change your description as well or your announcements, you, this is the page that you guys need to do it. You can also change the requirements if anybody can join or application is needed. And you guys can also change the alliance symbol, which again, it would still cost some gems for you guys to change it. If you want to navigate and look for different alliances, check out the alliance list and here you guys can scroll up and down and search for which alliance you are looking for and also you can go to the search bar and type on the alliance that you are looking for. So for this example, we're actually just going to search for my own alliance. So I'm going to type 4OA and we're going to hit OK and use that magnifying glass. So when you're in this page, you can click that envelope to send a quick message to the alliance leader. When you click view, this will transfer you to the alliance page that you are searching. You can also contact the leader here by clicking that contact leader and type a message here. And you guys can also navigate to the alliance members. Now, navigating here, you're going to be able to see all the alliance member of that particular alliance and you can send them a message. So let's navigate to the rankings and here you guys can see the individual power. So at this time, I ranked 12 on my alliance and uh, you guys can see all your alliance members rankings here. So you guys can also navigate to the killing machine. Basically this killing machine shows who are the top killers in your alliance who are basically very very active at attacking other players in this game. You guys can also navigate to the best contribution. Basically the point system here is based on your uh, technology donation. Then if you can navigate to the resource assistance, this is basically when you have a trading post and you start sending help to the other players. This is where you get points for. So you guys can also navigate to the alliance help. You guys can see who are the top helpers in your alliance. You know, I would use this ranking system to like reward your members. Like they say, hey, if you guys reach a certain rank, you guys gonna be rewarded with a certain amount of X of resources. Or you guys can also use this as a ranking system to promote your members. So yeah, you guys can do a lot of things with this rankings. So let's navigate through the invitation. So in this page, you're gonna be able to send random invites to players that don't have any alliances. Now, whether they accept or don't accept your invite, it really depends on the player. 
but this is such a great tool to invite players that without like actually searching them from the map and you guys can also tap the name or the nickname of the player to send an invitation to so make sure to utilize that tool so the last part here is if you have given up on your alliance and you want to delete your alliance this is the page for it so if you guys want to capture a holy site, you guys have to basically have it on the borders of your alliance territory. If not, you're not going to be able to conquer it. So what I'm going to show you guys next is that the alliance markers, which is the new update that we had. So this is a great tool to indicate any actions that you guys want to do. But right now I'm just going to say hello YouTube. And then you're going to see this hello YouTube on tap with this altar. This is such a great tool to utilize. Make sure to you guys to take advantage of it. You guys can set up markers for like, hey, build the flags. Let's defend here. Let's attack this place. So yeah. So the last part that I want to talk about is that if you guys have an enemy alliance and you guys want to destroy their flags or their fortress, you guys would have to connect your territory to their territory before you can actually attack their uh, flags or fortress. So if you guys want to scout their flag, you don't really have to connect your territory to theirs. So like I said, if you guys want to attack or like set a rally, you need to be. So I hope that this video was actually very helpful for you guys, especially for beginners. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop that into the comment section below. And make sure to share this video to, so that we can help other players. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment your opinion. And make sure don't forget to like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Definitely see you guys in the next video.